I'll go on the other side, yeah, for a change. Change is good as a holiday. Tonight I, <laughs> tonight I want to again speak about the New South Wales taxi industry and in particular about the hard-working, law-abiding small business taxi owners who have been left high and dry and in the lurch by this government that has basically failed to deliver on their promises. In, this, in their haste to re-regulate our transport industry, they promised the most generous hardship package in the world here in New South Wales. Yet the situation has become so critical, lives and families are being destroyed. This bureaucratic treachery is causing consequences obviously never thought through by those who initiated these point-to-point -point transport reforms. Taxi plate owners who have been encouraged and regulated by government to invest their life savings in their own small businesses now fa face bankruptcies, loss of their family homes, foreclosures, marriage breakdowns, severe physical and mental health issues, while banks and financial institutions are now refusing to lend against the value of their owners' plates. The government has allowed the licensing of 75,000 rideshare operators, ever increasing in numbers in New South Wales, yet the government's new commission has had minimal effort to regulate the new players. The result is totally prejudiced towards overseas big business operators of the likes of Uber and Google at the expense of small business owners and the destruction of small businesses here in New South Wales. The taxi industry in this state is an essential service which basically operates on a 24-7 basis for every member of our community. It's a vital part of the developing and integrated transport system that can support the initiatives of government to provide safe and secure travel throughout the state, support economic growth and development of our cities and our tourism needs, meet the requirements of an ageing population and, uh, and the disabled and provide vital entry-level employment for many people of our community. To date, negotiations with, with the government regarding compensation have rested with the New South Wales Taxi Council, whose members have deserted the council en masse and whose directors principally represent networks, not the owner drivers who represent small business owners of the many thousands of taxis who employ the drivers and have ultimate responsibility for improved standards within the industry. That New South Wales Taxi Council has been unsuccessful in keeping the government to its promises. It has uh, been in lock, sorry, it has been lock in hand with the government's unjust and uh, drawn out process that has so badly affected taxi small owners who have, been, uh, who have done the right thing. The New South Wales Taxi Council has lost the confidence of the industry, which is reflected in its dwindling membership base. As far as the Shooters, Fishers and Farmers Party is concerned, the only true voice of the entire New South Wales taxi industry is the Taxi Owners Small Business Association, TOSBA. If the Shooters, Fishers and Farmers Party are fortunate enough to hold the balance of power in either House after the next election, we will work hand in hand with the TOSBA to right these wrongs. It's an absolute disgrace that these owners, who, are, who have their taxi investments as their retirement income, are, are now faced with real prospect of being forced in, onto social service payments to survive, let alone having any prospect of transferring their taxi asset to, the next, to their next of kin. I addressed this Parliament in May of this year and appealed for more to be done to address the small taxi owners and operators who have been denied natural justice and are still waiting for the government to deliver on its promises. The only thing that has, been, that has happened since then is a complex and short-term additional assistance payment scheme application process which resembles a social security application with no quantification of the amount of performance benchmarks. The promises of hardship compensation are, were supposed to open in November 2016 and close in July 2017. It is now September 2018 and despite levies being raised this year on all taxi and rideshare trips, we are yet to see anything that would offset the pain caused by those who have fulfilled the obligations to government by investing in their business. It's an absolute disgrace that any government to do this to small business, let alone a conservative government. The taxi industry is, in New South Wales employs 15,000 full-time tax-paying tax paying workers and dedicated to lifting the standards and service delivery across the board. It is critical that we recognise the importance of these small business people, the safe service they provide to our travelling public and other users, and put, the halt, put a halt to the wrongful hardship that, that they have to endure. It is time to correct the wrongs that have been inflicted on the small business taxi drivers and owners.